Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Malone here, and I'm here with another great video for you guys today. That currently, we are in Wizard, Wizard 101, and we're in Cryptopia. Um, we are going for Monstrology. It's a boss called the Soul Keeper. Now, this guy is located in an area of Cryptopia known as the uh, Chamber of Souls or something along that line. Um, basically, I'm getting him because I like the name. And because it kind of looks cool, you know, it looks like one of those little, uh, crocotopian princes. So he's got, like, the big staff, and he looks like a really cool crocodile, but he's like a ghost, so you can kind of see through him. I love that. It looks so awesome. Um, and also, I obtained one of his soul... Hang on. No, no, I'm crafting. What am I doing? Ooh, astrology. Crocotopia. Soul of the Charm. I have one of his little minions, so these guys are pretty cool too because, as far as I remember, they're the only manders in the game that are technically considered undead creatures. Um, you'll notice most of these are Banshees, Crocs, you've got uh, Minotaur, you know, you've got well, more Banshees, you've got some Croc Mummies, but you'll notice that there is a very significant lack of manders. There's not that many Undead Manders here. Um, so this is basically the only one. Also, he looks kind of cool, and I like the whole idea of him being, of these guys being like servants to this dude. That, that's kind of cool too. So we've got, uh, it says here, guides the spirits of the Manders into the chamber of the Charmed to trap them in their afterlife. So he's not a very nice guy, as you can tell. He's really, really not a very nice dude. Um, and apparently he is considered a mob, so he's not actually a boss, which makes it a little bit easier on me because I'm gonna try and go without the uh, without the potion this time. So there we go. Should only need Tempest and obviously the Monstrology Enchant for this. So. While I'm doing this, I have a little story to tell you guys. So, a friend and I, there is a dungeon in Wizards 101 known as, like, the Beast Master Dungeon or something like that. It's supposed to be the hardest dungeon in the game. Alright. And the first boss wasn't all that hard. The second one is actually... <laughs> we actually all ended up giving up. And it was on the second boss. And the story behind that. So, one, I want to point out that I'm not sure if it was him or not, but there was... Uh, Blaze Lifehammer was there. Um, it looked like his wizard he had the pet and everything. Um, I've actually got a little bit of video from it, but up until the point that we all decided to flee. Um, I might upload that. I probably won't because, to be honest, it's just, you know, it, it's what it was and it was complete failure. That's what it was. We all literally like, <laughs> oh god, that was awful. And, okay, so one thing you have to realize. Apparently there is one of those late cheats in the dungeon. So there was another guy with us, and um, apparently the late cheat doesn't start un unless if you join uh, two rounds late. So if you join in the battle two rounds after it's begun, the late cheat will activate and it will kill you, um, or something like that. Does like 2,000 damage. Uh, but if you join the battle one round late, nothing's going to happen. It'll be perfectly fine. Ends up leaving the dungeon because he thought that he was going to be a perfect better team. So now we were already a player's choice, and there was me, my friend Doc, and Boy, so we were just getting there trying to get through the battle, and then Boy died first. He would lose, but then come back, to be honest, I don't really blame him because I uh, can't really, I found out you can't really do that dungeon with two people. You've got to have a full team, and you have to know what you're doing. For freeing us, young wizard, all of us within this chamber and now go it to was our first time in the organization and Josh hadn't been in there before. So it was our first time, we didn't really know what we were doing, we didn't know the cheats, we were playing it by hand, you know, we didn't. Um, and to be honest, my cards were not showing up the way I wanted them to. Like, my enchants were being just absolutely awful. And I only had Glowbug enchants and my Galvanic Field in there because the first battle you can't play or you get, you know, you get a called um, where it's like the death spell and it, it attacks yourself but it has 90% a 90% weakness on the enemy. Oh, uh, bad juju, bad juju. Yeah, so he bad jujus you and then you have to take a whole other round or like have someone else cleanse charm you on the round that you're gonna hit. 
Um, so you can't really blade in there, not practically, so you can't really stack. Otherwise, you're going to end up with an insane amount of 90% weaknesses, which is not easy to deal with. Um, you can't just cleanse charm five different weaknesses off of you, you know. They do need to make a spell like that because they don't have one. They only have one for blades, spawn fobble, and then shield, shatter. But there is nothing, nothing for weaknesses. You can't get rid of it. I think on fobble technically gets rid of weaknesses, but you can't on fobble yourself. Like they need to do ones for uh, traps and weaknesses and stuff. Things like your opponent puts on you. All right, so. The one thing that I don't like about this monstrology creature is that you have to walk all the way through this dungeon to get to him. It's crazy. And then it's like, it takes roughly 40 seconds, I think, to get to the battle from here. So if you're only getting three animus per battle, um, that it ends up taking a lot longer than a lot of the other creatures. On the other hand, the hard work that it takes to obtain each, each boss and uh, how they get, that's kind of good. Um, there was a monstrology creature I called the Shadow of the Land. And there's a boss that you fight with the Shadow And this is before you unlock Shadow Man. So it's actually the boss. Thank you for freeing us, One young of the wizard. bosses that you fight with. All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful afterlife. I feel like I should let you guys listen to what that guy says, because he's very grateful for us freeing his soul. Anyways, um, where was I? Oh my, oh yeah, it's the boss. It's the boss that you fight before you unlock your ability to train Shadow Magic. Like, it literally is the quest to unlock the trainer. Um, and it's this boss, and here's the thing, he's not all that hard. You can actually solo him, and I did. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know his cheats, and you don't have a strategy in place, he can kill you pretty easily. He is very easily soloed, but again, you have to have the ability to like... If you don't know how to set a deck with a bit of um, strategy involved, then you're not going to do very well. Uh, you have to kill him pretty fast too, and you also have to make sure that his minions don't stay alive very long. Otherwise, you will... you'll die, because... Okay, so he solos minions like every round. I, th I think it's a random, I'm not sure, but he'll randomly solo minions. And he already has an attack, and it's like a little power nova or something. It does uses it every five rounds, and it does 400 damage the first time. So without any minions there, it does 400 damage. With one minion, it does 800. Another minion, it does 1600. And then if he has a fourth minion up, whenever he uses the nova, then it'll do 3200 damage to everyone in the battle. And if that's just you, that's not good. Um, but if you manage to keep all of his minions gone, and they're really not hard to kill, they have like 1600 health, um, then you'll only get hit with the 400. If, you know, there's no minions alive whenever he does it. Uh, and if you have any resist, then it'll bring it down to like 200 300 damage, so it's really very tolerable. It doesn't hurt all that much. And also, he doesn't stream the system very much. I noticed that he has in the battle. He doesn't use all that. Like, he doesn't use all that. 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 He occasionally has to do small attacks. Thank you for freeing us, young wizard. All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful afterlife. But other than that, he doesn't really do much. He just kind of sits there and he's like, Yeah, I look cool. And he does. I'll show you guys the freaking freaking housing guest on this guy. He looks amazing. I don't think I got the treasure card for him though, which kind of makes me mad. I need to go back and get that. That might actually be a good time for me to uh, show you his monstrology, like what, what all you have to do. For him. Um, I will show you guys what the boss looks like. I don't know if all you remember. Or not. Go to Chrysalis, Shadow of the Land. This guy. So. He's pretty cool. Covers all brand or covers covers all below in the shadow of its almighty branches. Supposedly he's like the reason that we fight him is because we're trying to get uh, shadow magic, and in order to do that, um, because of what happened in Azteca, you know, we saved technically we saved him, but he was like a more colorful version if you remember. Um, and then Azteca ends up 
being destroyed. So the idea behind it is that even though we saved a lot of people while we were there, at the end of it all, we ultimately failed and everyone died. Even though, you know, you can still go there and it looks like people are still alive and stuff, but um, storyline-wise, everyone is dead. Practically, it would be silly if they just got rid of all the creatures and you could never return to Aztec. Like, that would make a lot of people pretty angry. Um, so you just kind of, you have to be able to separate what's practical from the storyline because they're not going to connect in this game. It's just not realistic. Um, but he, the Shadow of the Land represents our failure in Azteca and the guilt that we have, the shame that we have uh, behind our failure. The reason that, you know, we possibly couldn't get Shadow Magic if we had those feelings still holding us down. You know, we have to be free from that guilt. We have to free ourselves from the guilt and the shame of not being able to save an entire world that was most likely ultimately doomed to fail from the very beginning. Okay. And that, I mean, you have to realize everyone else on the world had already been destroyed even before we went there. So, that alone told you that, hey, this, you know, something's gonna happen to you. It may not be all that good. Thank you for freeing us, what young wizard. That? All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful yeah, afterlife. I've actually got a couple of videos that I should upload for you guys because a lot of stuff has happened lately. Like, a lot, a lot. So I've got a lot of stuff I need to update you guys on. And then also Test Realm is coming out very, very soon. So there's, there's going to be a lot of videos behind that. Get yourself ready, boys. We're going to have some fun up in here. Alright. Oh! Almost ran into those. Something to fight them. Okay. How far am I? 18 out of 20. And I do want his treasure card too, so I need 30 of them. So that means. So bad at math. Yeah, I think that's like five or six more battles. So really not all that bad. Again, the only problem is constantly running all the way down here. That gets very annoying. But for the most part, it's it's not all that hard of a battle, obviously, because it's Krakatopia. Although if you are in Krakatopia and you're trying to get into Monstrology, I have a feeling that this guy in here probably he'll probably give you a lot of Monstrology XP. He's such an abstract boss though, like, I don't think he's a storyline boss either. I'm not sure if he's part of the storyline or not. Personally, I mostly like him because of his name, and then just the fact that he's like a soul keeper. Yeah! So, technically, I keep souls too, so I feel a connection, you know? I'm stealing the soul of the soul keeper, so if I steal his soul, I get the rest of that soul. Thank you for freeing us, young wizard. All of us within You're this chamber welcome. can now go to a peaceful afterlife. You're welcome, young Manda. So a couple of videos that I'll have coming up, they're mostly going to be Wizard 101 related because for the most part that's what's going on right now, there's just a lot of stuff Wizard 101 related going on at the moment with Test Realm and all that. A couple of the ones that are going to be coming, you can expect these. Um, I found a way to easily obtain Hatch Peppers with a little bit of patience, but you can get a lot rather, relatively easily, um, you know, in a month, in a couple of weeks even. You'll have a lot more than... Let's just say that I have a way to help you guys out with that. You don't have to have people hatch with your pet to get hatch peppers. And depending on how much effort you're willing to put into something, um, you can actually set up a system in which 
you're basically mass producing the things. It's kind of like the uh, key limes, like when you plant key limes for shock to keys, if you plant a lot of them, you end up getting a lot of shock to keys. Like you've basically created the shock to key factory in your house. That's what I like to call them. I like to keep anything that mass produces something like rate right, right nine stacks of and uh, couch potatoes. Yeah, I call them factories. Rank 9 factory. Factory, amber factory. In reality though, King Parsley don't really amber factory. An amber factory will be like a gladiator furnace and I don't know. Technically you could consider an 80. Thank you for that freeing too, us, young wizard. Like you All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful afterlife. Especially since it takes so long to get to that boss in the first place. Oh. So close and yet so far. Okay. I feel like the reason that more people don't record monstrology and like fishing videos is because it's very repetitive and if you don't know how to keep something flowing, you know, how to make some differences in the video, it can be kind of boring to do and to watch, but um, really all you have to do, you just have to keep talking, you know, you have to conversate. Having a conversation about things tends to uh, make things a bit, a bit more interesting. Although, okay, so, uh, whenever I'm making, like, a YouTube video, it always feels like, like I'm talking to myself or like I'm talking to the screen, so I feel like, you know, the best way, the way that I do it, at least, if I do get nervous, and this is just a tip if you guys want to start a YouTube channel, um, what you want to do is just, like, picture someone else in the room, alright, and just pretend like you're having a conversation, um, about Wizard 101 with that person, so, you know, if you've got another friend that plays it, always good. Sometimes it's nice to have someone in a Skype call because then it at least looks like you're talking to someone else, but um, if that's not the case, if you just do solo videos for the most part, then, you know, just pretend like there's someone else in the room and it feels like you're talking to them. Talking to yourself. Alright. Oh, I got sidetracked with the uh, videos. So there's one for the uh, Hatch Peppers, obviously the test round videos are going to be coming. I think it should be Tuesday or Wednesday when that comes out. That's again, it didn't come out today. Um, and I usually do that at like 3 a.m. So if anything, it's coming out here in like five or six hours. So be sure to possibly expect that. This video is being uploaded on the day that it is. Thank you for freeing so us, young wizard. All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful afterlife. And then you can also expect an increase in fishing videos, because I haven't done those in a while. And then my audiobook viewers, you can expect some audiobook videos. Now, I know that I have viewers that watch for my old Plague Play Inc. videos, Plague Incorporated. Um, for those of you who have stuck around for those, you don't expect very many of them, at least not for a while. Because, again, there's so much other stuff going on. Uh, I will get back to it eventually, and then my Forge of Empires uh, people, I do apologize, I really, really do, but most likely, not in the foreseeable future, I will not be returning to that. Because I found out that if you, you know, go on vacation or something, you come back, and you've been gone too long, everything's erased. It erases all of your progress. And I made it pretty far in that game, I made it to the early Middle Ages, and I came back to the game and everything was gone. Um, because it has a time limit, it's like a month, and I was gone for a month. I had no internet access for a full month. And I came back and everything was gone, so I don't really see the point in returning to that game until I know that I'm in a position where I can log on at least once a day and make some decent progress. Um, for those of you who watch my audiobook videos, I will be continuing my audiobook videos. Um, after I finish the Magnus Chase one, though, don't expect any for a while, so that will be the last series for another few months. Because whenever I actually, whenever I'm able to move into my own apartment, which is very soon to be in Louisiana, whenever I'm able to move, I'll have more time to myself, you know, and I will be able to do a lot more audio videos. 
again. I've been trying to figure out um, how I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to make a new channel for it. I do currently have a channel already set up for my videos, and I tried to use it, but it didn't really work out. Because um, I don't currently have the files for the videos I currently have uploaded, and I don't want Thank everyone you for going this back and wizard. forth. All of us within this chamber can now go to a peaceful afterlife. So whenever I do get the chance to, um, whenever I do find some time to make some more audiobook videos, that will be the first thing I do. And once I figure out just how I'm going to go about doing that as well. Alright. And obviously, my Wizard 101 players, you can expect content. A lot more coming your way. I also do drink reviews and stuff, but I haven't done those in a while. Those are easy, I'll probably start doing those again. Okay, so we've got exactly 30 animus. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Alright, I'm ready too. Ready, set, boop. Oh yeah. Ready, set, boop. Oh yeah. Alright, let's, let's see what this guy looks like. Oh, look at him. Okay, well, I'll show you guys what he looks like in the castle in a sec. Where is it? Oh yeah. All of my Montreal GTC. Go ahead and let you look at all these. These are the ones I've gotten so far. Keep in mind that a lot of the creatures and bosses, I skipped the treasure card and only did the uh, housing guests, so I've got to go back and do those. But as of now, as of this moment, these are my current monstrology treasure cards. Now I'll show you guys what this guy looks like in the castle. You can go to one of my monstrology castles. Alright, let's see here. Go ahead and show you guys around a little bit. These aren't all of my monstrology creatures, but these are some of them. From Kalaka. The Laughing Kalaka is actually from a. Uh, He's actually from Chrysalis. No, not, no, 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 not Chrysalis. Where was he? I can't remember where I got him. Hang on. Let me check. Oh, yeah, okay, so he is from Chrysalis. Servant to the Shadow of the Land, so I guess he was the minion. Uh, because haunted shadow trees are just that much scarier when backed up by a snickering cacophony. Oh my god. Yeah. So he looks pretty cool. Uh, he looks just like the Grim Kalaka from Azteca, so there's not that much of a difference. Um, I just got him because I thought he was interesting. Alright, Sergeant Skull Sweater. I've been working on some carrots. There's the Soul of the Charm. Alright, last but not least... As the soul keeper. Oh yeah, I've got a crazy amount of aquariums. This isn't even all of them. I've got them through like a whole bunch of different castles. The life of a collector is truly an interesting. Alright, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe for more amazing videos. Um, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.